Welcome to this week's edition of the Dakota Angler 2-Minute Fishing Report. Well, despite a little bit more stable weather in parts of the state, uh, the bite continues to be a little bit temperamental, but uh, again, progressively getting a little bit better, so I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, the lakes up in the northeastern part of the state that produced walleyes this past week included uh, Wabe, Bitter, Opitz, Goose, Dry Lake by Clark, and that bite continues to taper off. Uh, Lamb, Bailey's, Midland, Indian Springs, as well as Pickerel, and also a few being caught at Big Stone. Down the southeastern part of the state, the lakes include the same ones that have always been producing fish this, week, uh, this year, uh, but some of them have gotten progressively better, such as Thompson, especially in the late afternoon and evening hours. Uh, the, that bite continues to do well. Uh, Dry Lake by Willow Lake, Ponson, 81 Ponds have been producing a few, Sinai, Whitewood, Oakwood, and we haven't talked about Oakwood much. There's been a few being caught there. And then also Fish, Vermilion, as well as Twin, and remember, Twin is the trophy lake. Now, what have guys been doing to catch the walleyes? Uh, a lot of guys have been still using the Acme Hyper Rattle. I think that's probably been the most consistent presentation all year long. Uh, the VMC Bull Spoon is something new uh, this year that a lot of guys have started to use and having some success with. The Clam Leech Flutter Spoon do, continues to do well, as does the Rapala Ripping Wrap. Uh, down, as far as the perch bite is concerned, uh, again, you know, depending on the day, some guys are coming away with limits, and other days, you know, a few fish here and there. Uh, the lakes that have produced perch this past week include Big Stone, and there you have to sort quite a bit. It's a great place to take a family, by the way. Uh, other lakes include Wabe, Dry Lake by Clark, Dry Lake by Willow Lake, uh, Goose, Ponset, Thompson, a few being caught at 81 Ponds, Sinai, uh, Whitewood, and Whitewood you have to get through all the pike, and then also Island. Now, what have guys been doing to catch the perch? Uh, really nothing, you know, substantial or anything crazy. Uh, the VMC Bullfly Jig, we talked about that this past week, has been continuing to produce uh, perch. And then also the Kenders T-Rip, uh, the Haley's, the Pilkies, in other words, uh, drop chain lures. And then also anything tungsten has worked well. And then tipping that with a waxworm, maggot, or a small minnow. In this week's version of Todd's Tackle Tips, we're going to talk about how weather affects fishing. It's that time of the year where we usually talk about how you can maybe minimize the impacts that Mother Nature has upon your success when you're out there on the ice. And what we're talking about is the impacts or the effects of pressure. That's really what determines whether or not you what we used to call a full bucket day of fish or a half bucket full of fish. And really what, again, it depends on the pressure, the weight of the atmosphere. That's what, the, what pressure is, is the weight of the air pushing down on you or on that body of water on a given day. The higher the pressure, the heavier the weight the more impact that it has on the fish. In other words, in other words, for the fish to, to move around or to swim around, they have to try to compensate that and try to me you know, mess with their buoyancy. And so when the pressure is the highest, that's the most weight on the fish or the body of water at that point in time. And this impact of pressure is amplified in the wintertime due to the ice taking up that much more water. But then when the pressure is high, the, air, the bladder and the fish fill up to make them more buoyant. But what happens is they usually end up going down to the bottom. They're very inactive because they're very full because their bladder's taking up that much more space in their body. And so they're not moving around. They're not going to be looking for a meal, so to speak. You need to go look for those active fish at that point in time. When the pressure is low, that has the minimal impacts upon those fish, and those fish are out roaming around, swimming around, looking very active, and you don't need to really worry about the presentation at all. So on a high-pressure day, you have to go looking for the fish. You've got to basically go kamikaze fishing. You need to you know, drill quite a few holes. And then when the pressure's low, really, wherever you set up, if there's fish, they're going to bite. And so, again, when the pressure's high, you're probably going to have to downsize your jigs and change up that presentation. Low pressure, not at all. So how can you tell the difference between high and low-pressure days? On those bright, sunny days, that's when the pressure is at the highest and when the wind is the lightest. And when the wind is the strongest, typically, it's going to be on a low-pressure day, especially if the wind is out of the south. The wind is out of the south, low pressure. Wind out of the north, northwest, high pressure. So you can be your own closet weather forecast, but, and forecaster, but you can also look at the weather forecast from, i.e., the National Weather Service. If we're forecasting the wind from out of the south, the pressure will be falling all day, and you'll have a very active pattern. If the wind is out of the northwest, the pressure is rising, and you need to go kamikaze fishing. So some things to think about because you can, can minimize the impacts that that pressure will have upon your success by changing your presentation. But you can only change your presentation when you pay attention to some of the clues that Mother Nature is giving you. 
Now it's time to take a look at a few photos that you sent in to me this past week. And remember, if you'd like your photo included in next week's version of the 2-Minute Fishing Report, please send it to me. Send it to Todd at dakotaangler.com or post it to our Facebook wall. And before we end this week's report, I want to remind you of our ongoing ice fishing clearance sale here at the store. That if you can't make it to the store, make sure you check us out on the web at dakotaangler.com because as you can see behind me, we still have a great selection, probably the largest ice fishing selection in the tri-state area. So make sure you stop on by and take advantage of these great prices that we have ongoing right now. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 605-336-9132. Well, folks, that's this week's version of the 2-Minute Fishing Report from Dakota Angler. I'm the owner of Todd Heitkamp, and as we say around here, fish on! We'll see you next week, and again, thanks for watching. Stay healthy, folks, and please stay safe.